If you like a modern yet systematic counter to the E6 Sicilians, if so, then you've come to the right place. It's GM Max here with another opening training. And this one is actually going to be a little bit of an update to an old course of mine attacking the Sicilian, which was an anti-Sicilian reptile I created back in 2020. I think in the earlier video I said 2021, but yeah, I, I double checked and it was, it was actually a year before that. But in that course, I basically recommended the approach of C3 and going for an improved Alapin Sicilian as the move E6 does limit some of Black's best options there. However, in 2024, I want to also share another way in which you can play this system. Um, and this is not just going to be on YouTube, but also doubling up as uh, you know, training within the within my course, attacking the Sicilian. And you know, if you do want to check out you know, the new updated 2024 version that I'm in the process of creating you know, before the, the price does increase when the update finishes, then yeah, you can check it out in the checkout link in the description below. Um, but in any case, yeah, let's see how you know, how the position plays out after G3, which is what I'm calling the improved King's Indian attack. Because when you play the move D3, you sort of your opponent kind of knows that, okay, the structure is kind of fixed and they can, you know, sort of choose whatever they plan they want to from there. Whereas G3 is a little bit more flexible in that there are certain positions where we will be able to push that pawn one, like, forward with D4 directly. For example, after Knight C6 and... Apologies, I skipped ahead a little bit there. Um, but after bishop to g2, like for example, in the position with the pawn on d3 instead, the main line for black is to play g6, but that's actually falling into a trap with d4. We're able to get in a improved open Sicilian where black is going to have some weaknesses in the knight b5 and, and knight d6 to deal with as such. By the way, if you are enjoying this training, do make sure to leave a like on the video and also to consider subscribing. By subscribing, you don't just support the channel, but also when you do click on that notification bell and set the notifications to all, that will ensure that you don't miss out any on any of my trainings to help adult improvers like you improve your chess. Um, of course, if you're a junior chess improver, of course, you'll still learn from these, but yeah, mainly focusing on the, the adult improvers, you could say. Anyhow, Let's continue with how the position can play out, and you know, we'll get to what happens in some of the d5 lines as well. But after knight f6, I'm actually recommending the move of d3 in this position. Um, I remember when I first started playing this line in about 2012, I was playing the move of queen to e2. The reason I'm suggesting d3 now is that the move of e5 is a little bit annoying, where black kind of ends up with this open Sicilian kind of position where you know, basically your queen is just not really that great on e2 in this structure. Whereas if you play d3, like e5 is just not as effective anymore because you know, we have a lot more flexibility when we haven't played queen e2 already. Um, you know, we can use the tempo a lot more productively. But what I expect most of your opponents are going to play, when I, when I checked in the lead chess database, most people were playing d5 in response. But then we can play queen e2, this modern version of the king's Indian attack. Um, the old version is where you play knight bd2 and, you know, follow games like Fisher Miyagmasora and, like, e5, knight f1, you know, h4, all, all this kind of stuff. But even though while it's quite a systematic approach, which does score well for white in the database, I find that the move queen e2 is in some ways a little more flexible and I would argue even more dangerous for black on a practical level. Now, in this version, black's already kind of committed to playing a move like bishop e7, because if he does play something like g6, what's going to happen is that, you know, white will just be able to just sort of build up this very strong center on the dark squares where the bishop on g7 just becomes very passive. And just so you know, like, I'm not just, you know, showing the ideas and just, you know, saying, you know, go fend for yourself. But, you know, for those who are watching this in the attacking the Sicilian course, you know, I am also include like various sections of the model games for the different types of positions that can arise and the different variations to make sure you do feel very comfortable in the rising middle game positions. But for this kind of like free sample of sorts, yeah, we're sort of going a little bit, uh, you know, just a little bit more of a summary, like just getting you started with playing this position, playing this variation as soon as possible. But yeah, most of your opponents are going to play bishop e7. And now after castles, castles, e5, and knight d7, um, the hint I'm going to give you all for this puzzle here is that we're going to be going for something a little bit different to the usual plan of like rookie one, knight d2, knight f1, and 
pushing the H pawn down the board. What do you think it might be? What do you think is the move we play here as white? And if you do need more time to think about it, you can always pause the video and come back when you have made some sort of decision of what you would play in a game. That's going to help you remember it a little bit better. But yeah, in this case, the key move is to play c4. And the nice thing about c4 is you just kind of secure that space advantage with having the pawns on e5 and c4. Because um, in these sort of lines, what happens, like if we take the knight d2 line, you know, black just gets this really good counterplay on the queen side and, you know, their play is, you could say, a little bit faster than white's initially. But in this position with the pawn on c4, you just don't really have that problem. Like if they play b5 now, it's a pawn sacrifice. And you know, if they prepare it with a6, well, that's also a little bit kind of slow. There are a few different structures you could get from here, but the main one's going to be either they play d4 and you know just let you kind of build up this this steady attack on the on the king side, or they might play a move like d c4 and you know just give you the even bigger space advantage than, than what you had before. Um, like d c4 is a strategic mistake, but it's a pretty common mistake which I do cover in some detail in the updated version of the course. Um, and yeah, it's true we don't really have the space in this training to. You know, cover the alternative approaches like what if they play for b5 but i can tell you right now that this position is going to you know also give white let's say the easier position to play um for the details again see the see the full course um but yeah basically that's what what white is aiming for with this queenie to approach and if black does play something like d6 for example you know, the idea of d6 being that you know, you're not laying white just go e5 and you know, just have a pawn you know in the center but in this case, you know, we can still play rook e1 and, you know, again, we sort of benefit from the fact we haven't played queen e2. It allows us to be a little bit more flexible playing c3 and you know, just going for the space advantage with the move d4 next turn. And if they do stop that with e5 again, we kind of see the point that... We see the point that, yeah, we haven't played the, the move queen e2, so it allows us to, you know, play some, some better moves instead by comparison. Um, anyway... That's, yeah, sort of the idea I want to share, and um, if you might want the alarm was, because I have a, a chess lesson in 15 minutes, but I'm trying to use the pockets of time as well as I can. Um, that's actually a good product productivity tip, like, if you are struggling to find enough time for your chess training, like, finding those little pockets, like, when you are commuting to or from work, or, like, on your lunch break, it, it can be a nice way, yeah, to get that added value in, as it were, uh, not just, like, waste the time, but, but I digress a little bit. Anyway, um, of course, Black's not forced to play knight f6. You know, they could play a move like d5, and you know, you might notice that d3, d4, and queen d1 would be a little bit of a problem here. So, we'll need to do something a little bit different, and that is going to be to play e d5 and then castles here, where after knight f6, d4, and now they put the bishop on e7 just so rook e1 doesn't come with a check, because that would be a bit annoying otherwise. Here White's got a few different options and I actually cover three different moves in the in the full course uh, for 2024. Um, but the point is that you're basically going to get a pretty similar structure each time, like with this isolated queen pawn for black, where you know, probably it's objectively quite close to equal, but it's just a little bit easier to play for white when you've got this uh, this bit of pressure against the the black d5 pawn, also with the bishop kind of getting involved here. Um, so that's kind of the idea, and you might know, do also cover moves like knight c3, and also the less common move of bishop e3 that Carlson did play in his world championship match a decade ago against the Nuns. You know, the game ended in a draw, but I do think this is not such a bad practical weapon that you know might catch out a, an unsuspecting opponent. Um, and finally, if they do play something like a6, you know, just in general, you can just play d4 and you're not really transposing to a pure open Sicilian because you do have the option to go c4 and play in a kind of Marotri bind approach and just have a very pleasant advantage that way. Um, you might also notice, yeah, the Marotri bind approach. You're kind of in the Hungarian variation elsewhere in the course or, you know, if those who watch on YouTube, I did a training video on it about one or two weeks ago, I think. But anyway, I do want to just conclude this training just by sharing what happens if Black doesn't play the move knight c6. Um, again, if they play d5, I think that in this case, I like the move order of just playing the move d2, you know, this way you just avoid some annoying checks like queen e7, which can, you know, kind of disrupt your setup a little bit otherwise. When you play d4, like queen e7 is just not an issue anymore, because now you can block with the bishop. 
So normally they go knight c6 and, you know, the normal continuation would be just like knight f6 and just transposing back to, you know, what we were just looking at before with, you know, knight c6 and d5. But they can also play some moves like bishop g4 and, you know, there are a few details that are beneficial to know, like that, for example, you can actually sack on d4 because if they go knight d4, you can go queen e1 and, you know, knight e5 and, and get a really strong attack on the on this diagonal in, in this sort of way. Um, I think I actually won a game in Ballarat, I think in 2016 it might have been, against, I think, uh, yeah, Mr. Kohler, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, that's a game actually I should probably add to the, you know, to the lesson at some point when I'm end up doing the recording for the, you know, the 2024 update of Attacking the Sicilian. But, uh, yeah, it's a... Uh, Oh, it's nice to know, you know, that I'm not just, like, telling you to play this, but it's actually something that I've played myself against some good players with some some nice results thus far. Um, and, yeah, if they play something like A6 in the Khan Sicilian style, I just find it works quite well to transpose to an open Sicilian type of structure. Um, if they do play Bishop E4, by the way, you just end up getting a really big lead in development, like Bishop E7, D5, and it's it's actually pretty hard for black to sort of fend off this this really strong attack again I'll, I'll cover it a bit more deeply in the you know in the full course that were but in general you're going to get a position like this where like knight takes d4 and yeah i mean in a lot of positions you'll just go a4 and sort of exploit the fact that you know normally in the Khan Sicilian with the nylon c3 black would go b4 get that key tempo on the nylon c3 to get a reasonable game but without that option available it just becomes strategically quite a bad position for black um, I do cover the different options like knight f6, knight c6, queen c7, and d6 in the uh, in the full course, as it were, with some nice model games. Um, and as for the sidelines, yeah, if knight f6, e5 just tends to be a pretty good response. Um, actually, after knight d5, can even sort of transpose to one of my ideas in the move 2 sidelines, you know, where they are, you know, playing like knight f6 on move 2 instead of e6, the names of a Sicilian. And if they play b6, then yeah, I find that just going for d4 again works quite well. Like take, take, bishop b7, bishop b2. And yeah, I mean, in this case, black really wishes he had like a6, b5 and the counterplay against the against the e4 pawn by attacking the knight. And without that possibility, white is basically just better here. So those are the ideas I want to share with the improved King's Indian attack. I do believe that these ideas do give you enough knowledge to start playing this in your own games. So yeah, I wish you luck with playing this system. Do let me know in the comments below what was one of the most interesting moves or ideas you came across and, you know, do you feel like this Kings in the attack is like pretty easy to play and, you know, it's going to be a bit annoying for your opponents? You know, let me know your your opinion in the in the comments. And yeah, I, I mentioned at the, start of each, at the end of each video, it's like the, you know, regular, let's say, subscribers or viewers will know it by now. But I do have a free Facebook group, Adult Chess Improvers, where I do share, you know, different chess puzzles and articles of mine and Grandmaster advice each day. You know, all to help adult improvers like you to improve your chess without the frustration of wasting a lot of time on training methods that are simply not working. Because uh, I know that, you know, for a lot of, you know, players, like, you know, they might listen to someone's advice, but that person maybe doesn't understand, you know, the challenges that you're facing in your chess games. Whereas for me, like, you know, I still remember what it was like, you know, when I was like 1400 or 1600 or 2000. So maybe a little bit more empathy and understanding, you know, what is actually going to make the difference in your, in your games and, and in your results. Uh, but yeah, that being said, I will see you guys, you know, in the free Facebook group in the next training video. And yeah, until then, take care.